where every single time I hear a Mega Man X soundtrack, it's like, I gotta play that game again. It is my favorite of the Mega Man games overall. Definitely not the first Mega Man for the Super Nintendo, or the original Nintendo, I should say. But, um, but yeah, Mega Man X, definitely a good one. So what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the stream. Uh, so the other day, the Nintendo Direct came out, and they said, Hey, we're finally doing Super Nintendo games on the Switch. And everyone's like, it's about freaking time. And then they didn't tell anybody, but put it into a press release later that, oh, by the way, we're not doing, like, we're not adding games every single month like we were with Nintendo. Uh, it's going to be infrequent. So one step forward, three steps off a cliff onto a bunch of sharp rocks below that are, like, covered in, like, lemon juice and mercury and whatever, like, you know, salt. So, yeah, it's, Nintendo just doesn't get it at all. It's like, hey, all right, you're gonna do something positive and just just screw it up. So, goal for right now is actually just go through and chest it out. Because you can see right here on my uh, home is that I have the Nintendo one that had a lot of problems. Like, you couldn't get rid of the controls on the screen. So you always have this guide constantly telling you, like, well, here's how you, you know, like hit A to jump, B to punch, left, right to move. It's like, okay, I got it. Get off the screen. It, there's no way to get rid of it. It also had a lot of. I mean, we're talking like major input lag. So I am hoping that they have fixed this problem with the Super Nintendo. I have not fired it up at all. This is first time. Yeah, those controls are on the screen constantly. It's like, why? Okay, settings, 4x3, pixel perfect. Don't ever do that. It's not correct. It's not really pixel perfect. Oh, hey, nice. They have a show or not show. Excellent. They have learned their lessons slightly. Okay, Brawl Brothers, Breath of Fire, Demon Crest, that's an awesome one. F-Zero, Pilot Wings, a personal favorite. Dreamland 3, it's okay. It's one I definitely want to add to my collection, though. Uh, U.S. version is a lot more expensive than the Japanese. Kirby's Dream Course, which I played a couple days ago on stream. Joel Mac 2, eh. Star Fox has not aged well, but it was great for the time. That was amazing. Stunt Race FX is, it will be interesting to see how this runs. Actually, I'd say Joe and Mac over Chuck Rock, personally. Uh, I played Chuck Rock on the Sega Genesis, and I was not impressed. It was, that was back when I was a kid, and I played a couple, about a month ago. Just like, not on stream, just to try it out, and like, eh, opinion hasn't changed in 25 years. But I know, like, Chuck Rock was, like, huge in Europe. Had, like, ports to, like, just about everything. Like, the Amiga. Uh, I think the C64 got it. A whole bunch of stuff. So, I know it was more popular there. But Star Race FX is one I haven't really seen emulated correctly. I think... No, I don't think this is this is on the uh, Super Nintendo Classic. Because I modded mine. I might put it on there. But usually if you play this game in an emulator, it runs, like... 60 frames per second it runs amazing when it ran like in actuality like 10 frames a second so i'll see how it'll be interesting to see how this one looks edf this is a shooter super ghouls and ghosts oh man i rented this one game one time one time actually no i take it back we maybe rented it a total tw two times and it just beat my brother and my myself into the ground every time super metroid a classic yoshi's island or if you have the Japanese version like I do, Yossi Island. Another classic. So we got the Marios right here. Mario World, Kart. Poyo Poyo? Wow. An SFC game. I'm surprised. Super Soccer. I've never played. Super Tennis. I love this game. It's a very simple tennis game. I have it complete in box. It's just like, back back when I bought it, they were selling for like five bucks. And people were like, oh, this is, this is a dumb tennis game. It's like, it's really addictive when you play it. And Link to the Past, the best Zelda. Alright, so let's investigate something first. I am horribly colorblind. I normally can't see a lot of these colors and these type of things, so we'll see. Okay, so is this supposed to be like... There we go, it's like, just get off the screen. Oh, 
I was just picking stuff. I was just trying to get the stupid menu off the screen. It's like, hit plus for options. It's like, okay, get off the screen. I don't need it. Yeah, now it's so we suspend game. I don't care. <laughs> Look at this. Okay. Jesus. Yeah, so, uh... Yeah. Like I said with Nintendo, one step forward, two steps off the cliff. But yeah, the, the Couch Lord, it's it's Japanese. It's an SFC game, Super Famicom game, and they're like, whatever, we'll just bring it over. Now you read it better than I do, Hold Your Fire. I'll, t I'll tell you that for sure. So, so far I can see most of the colors. Like, red is a little bit harder for me to see. But it looks like that's okay, so... Game selection. Yeah, controls... Show controls off. It still brings them up in the game. All right, let's just go down the list. Brawl Brothers sounds really familiar. I've probably played the Japanese version. I wish we could change the background, like just have black bars instead. Instead of like this kind of gray filter in. Pardon me. Okay, if you play with two players and you leave the hitting each other on, that's just evil. Like, uh, my brother and I had rented Battle Toads and Battle Maniacs for the Super Nintendo, which is kind of like a remake, like a remake of the first game. And it's one of those things that's like mode A, like two player mode A, two player mode B. So we're like, well, we'll pick mode A and just like start smacking each other. Like, okay, well, let's reset this. And, uh, let's, uh, you know, like, let's make sure we can't hit each other. So, special jump and attack. With a question mark of, huh? Nani? Yeah, so I have no idea what angry mode is. I'm just waiting for this garbage to get off the screen. Yeah, so this is, like, worse so far than the NES one. It's just, like, constantly popping up with, like, crap to tell you on the screen that you don't care about. It's like, I don't care. I turn that off. I don't want to see it. Okay, I have played this, but it was called something else. I, I don't remember what it was called, but it was something different. You have a partner. Pick Mr. Karate Dude. So I know this game had sequels, too. Rushing Beat. Okay, yes. I, Rushing Beat, I have heard of. So that makes sense. So that that I have heard. So I remember they made also a couple of sequels to this as well that were also on Super Nintendo. So that that's where I've heard because I'm like, this seems familiar. Characters seem really familiar. Uh, input lag so far. Uh, feels like maybe four or five frames. Probably around four.
This is really quiet. Let me crank this up for my headphones. That'll let me know if I need to raise it up in the... on OBS as well. If it's too quiet. Quiet on OBS. Okay, let's crank that up then. We'll make it a little louder. Hopefully that's better. Throw reminds me of kind of like Ninja Gaiden the arcade version, which was just absolutely terrible. Remember the jump button on, on that game on the arcade being like an actual physical button on top of the joystick? It was really weird. Um, okay. I was like, where am I at? <laughs> yeah, it was really bizarre. That game wasn't good to begin with, but then just like adding that control scheme to it, you know, with the jump on jump button on top of the joystick, like the actual joystick itself, it was really kind of bizarre. Hmm, road chicken, delicious. You made me drop my road chicken. I was like hitting buttons to see if I could like spawn in myself and it just like it just puts you in on a timer. Yeah, hit detection in this is not that great. Not sure why they included it. Eat the baseball bat. Endless running into the screen. I have a double jump. Okay, that's interesting to find out. And bullets, for some reason, set me on fire. Okay. Well, so far this feels a little bit more responsive than the Nintendo emulator, which is a good thing, because that Nintendo emulator was just terrible. It was like 5 to 8 frames of input lag. Okay, I have a triple jump. Never mind, not double jump, but triple. Yeah, so why this game was included, I... I'm honestly baffled. I do not know. It's like a subpar beat em up. That's being like kind of generous. Spack. Okay, that's a new one. I've heard like pow and crunch, but spack. That's different for sure. It's like I'm not unwittingly, like unwittingly saying like a racial slur or something like that, am I? Spack.
Oh no, I died. How terrible. How unfortunate that that has befallen me. So I used to playing like Retro Arch, I want to like press and like both my thumbsticks to like bring up the menu to quit. Not quite how it works. It's got loading. I mean, it's loading right now. It's kind of crazy. And then it didn't go anywhere. There we go. Alright, Breath of Fire. That's a role-playing game. We're not going to get into that. Uh, let's see. Demon's Crest. This is a game that was just really ridiculously overpriced, and it has been for years. It's not like Earthbound prices, but last I saw, it was up there. It's just one of those games that very limited number produced. They didn't really kind of believe in the product. I don't remember seeing advertisements for this. So it's like, yeah, it's. Demon's Crest Super Nintendo. So it's selling about close to $90 to $100 or so. Which is kind of nice because that means it's dropped in price because it used to be a lot more expensive. Last time I was looking to kind of acquire this game, like, it was about Okay, so it only ducks its head to where you are. Nope, oh, game doesn't mess around. It's like starts you in the middle of a fight to the death with a dragon, apparently. And it really doesn't mess around to super ghouls and ghosts, good lord. Half that problem is like fighting the slowdown of the game, which is horrendous. And if they've emulated correctly as well, it's going to have massive slowdown too. game a long time ago. I don't remember it starting with a fight with a dragon. Just remember it starting off like in a level, like right here. It's like start game and then this is how the game would start. You just knock open the door and then away you went.
I'm not a clansman! He's dick, he's gone. Okay, no ducking. Okay, first level-ish done, I guess? Doesn't really have it like stage one, two, you know, something like Castlevania would. So, so far, like, the lag feels a lot better than it did with the Nintendo emulator, which is good news. So when I first played the Nintendo emulator, I'm like, oh man, this is really bad. A lot of games were almost borderline unplayable. And it just pushes me right down, so like flying onto it.
I've watched your progress, and I'm glad that I shall be the one to put an end to your petty crusade. Or is it pretty crusade? He really thinks I'm pretty. I believe you have heard of me. I am Arma. No, I, I, I haven't. I'm sorry. I'll be your executioner. Oh, okay. You insist. You do seem to possess the strength people have been talking about. Look forward to our next encounter. If you say so. I look forward to you beating me again on the crest of Earth. With it, you can morph into a G Gargoyle, like G Gundam. Maintain great speed and, and gain great speed and the strength to break stone statues. Mode 7! You need an urn to carry potions? Okay. Do you sell them? No? Okay, goodbye. some kind of super jump I'm not knowing about. Nice password systems before battery backup was more common. Not the worst password I've seen. That belongs to like Super Tennis. F Zero! I think this is a launch game for the system. It still holds up, it's great.
Do I have this one with the box? Let me take a look. Um, no, I... Yeah, actually, I do. There it is. It's really kind of hard to collect games, like, complete in box for a Super Nintendo, because they had these, like, flimsy kind of cardboard boxes that got destroyed easily, and people kind of threw them out. Whereas the Sega Genesis was, like, plastic clamshells, so those, that's a lot easier to do. Really get used to the controls. It doesn't make me wonder, like, you're in a hover car, why does, like, rough gravel, like, slow you down, or ice make you skid? It's like you're a hover, hover car, that shouldn't affect you whatsoever. Oops, pay attention, try to make sure nothing is typed in chat. his track. Right now it's like, oh, you're on ice. It's like, that, that impacts me how exactly? Nice game of pinball. Thank you. 
So Nimix, who's a friend of the chat and the stream, actually did a, a uh, task on this game with some really kind of cool skips. They were supposed to be like, one of them was supposed to be like sub-pixel perfect, but it's like, I got that once. No task required. <laughs> He's like, oh, it's impossible. I'm like, dude, I did it once. <laughs> One time only, I'm sure. Just dumb luck. But still, my favorite F-Zero is F-Zero X by far and away. So far, it's better than the Nintendo one. The Nintendo emulation was just like at least five to eight frames input delay, which was horrendous. So, so far, this feels like closer to maybe four to five, perhaps. Probably closer to four. Yeah, so so far it really feels like maybe four to five frames of input lag. Five is like the utmost tolerant of like what I can like tolerate in playing a game. Pilot wings. One of the very first games I ever had for the system. Do you ever dream of flying? Well, it's not gonna be like your dreams, and don't worry, you'll have your underwear on and when you're in front of the class. Hi, I'm Tony, and I'll be your instructor for Area 1. They say I'm like a tiger. Rawr. Lessons will cover a few basic landing in airplane and skydiving for accuracy. It's like, don't you think you should tell me like the basics of flying first? No, 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 just get up there, you'll figure it out. It'll be fine. Oh, 
okay. I thought you opened like around 300 be like just about the right enough like speed for you to be low and, and go right into the target. I was wrong! I mean, input lag. Absolutely total input lag caused that. So the biggest problem I have with this, and I mentioned this a little bit earlier, Ronnie, is that Nintendo's like, hey, we're gonna have these Super Nintendo games for you to play. And it's like, yeah, great, awesome. Except for then they don't tell anybody that, oh, by the way, we're not releasing games every single month. Uh, now they're going to be sporadic and whenever we feel like releasing them. So who knows when new games are coming out and what frequency. So Nintendo's always one step forward and three steps off cliff. <laughs> Do you know how to take off? Who cares? We're gonna let you in this plane anyway. Speed up, speed down. Got it. All right. I was in high school, I had a friend who was actually becoming a pilot. He was like taking flying lessons and becoming, basically doing all the required hours so he could get his pilot's license. And one day he took me up in the Cessna. I wasn't supposed to, but we did it anyway because we we're teenagers and dumb. So, uh, he let me have the controls at one point. And I was like, dude, can I do a loop to loop in this? He's like, sure, why not? I've never done one before in a Cessna. I'm like, alright. So, Two things. One, Cessnas aren't really built to do a loop-de-loop. Because -loop. Uh, I was watching the wings, like, flex. <laughs> it was like, the entire time, like, going up and down, like, okay, the wings might come off and we're probably going to die. This is a dumb idea. Two, you quickly learn that there's unsecured items inside the cabin with you, like pencils, flight logs, and things like that. And that will go flying around as you do, like, you know, as you go upside down. So it was a fun time, you know, screwing around. And that was the only time I've ever, ever been able to fly a plane was like that. Like, quote-unquote, fly a plane. And then I learned pilot wings, and I was like, yep, I'm, I'm well qualified. See, I'm certified. Tony believes in me. Hey, Shirley. Fun fact, the actual rocket belts that do exist, that we have, only last for like 10 to 15 seconds, then they run out of fuel. Pardon me, there was like a James Bond movie. I think it was Thunderball. He starts off like in a platform, he grabs like he's in a building, straps on the uh, rocket, you know, like the, the rocket belt the jetpack and goes flying off and then lands next to his car. That's pretty much like as soon as the guy landed, like the rocket belt, that was like, he was out of gas. It was like he had maybe like half second left of gas left in that thing and it was going to be completely out. They go, they run out of like gas, maybe not like 10 seconds, but I remember something that's ridiculously fast. Here we go.
Let's try that again. This score it might not be certified. No kidding, it's called impossible. Momentum in this is like a real killer. Fortunately, with like the Nintendo 64, the Rocky Mountain became a lot easier. <laughs> I expect you to just like, you know, fly into the air and then crash like an idiot or explode like the Rocketeer. Speaking of the Rocketeer, one of my favorite scenes in that stupid movie. It's like, oh, the bad guys are gonna catch us, but we need to get away in the truck. It's not starting. He's like, no problem. So he braces, like he's standing in the back cab of the truck, braces his hands on it, like on the roof, and then like ignites his jets and they go like flying off down the road, like jet powered truck. Where in actuality, it would have just like he would have gone shooting right into the cab and crushed himself and died in a spectacular fashion. But who am I to say that the movie wasn't realistic? Missing all the rings. trying to see, like, maybe I can hit that moving platform. Nope. You can still do it! We'll barely pass you! You're a danger to everybody, but we'll let you pass. Be just safe enough to be a commercial airline pilot. You're becoming very good. Lady, um, I'm worried about the accreditation of your school. Especially since the fourth level, actually, yeah, the fifth level is like you're flying a helicopter on a rescue mission. Hang glider!
try it again. Next 75 feet, it's like uh, an airplane, you do like 75 feet before you blink. failure. I'm on the ground. I'm on the runway. Well, I'm here. I'm not dead. All right. Kirby Dreamland 3. Okay, everybody comes to try me, got it. 1997, man, I forgot this game came out that late. Okay, Hamtaro. How do I get on you? Bye. 
So I have no idea what this blue blob is, why he follows me. I gotta say, this game is really putting me to sleep. It's like, wow, this is really, really kind of boring. Kirby 64 Crystal Shards, a lot more fun. Yes, I can, okay. that mediocrity good lord yeah so that kirby 3 will just oh it's just slow and oh the other kirby games are nintendo were fun i played this the other day on stream i'm not gonna play it again we've all seen it joe and mac 2 this one i did rent once Remember slow down being a big thing with it. Sound mono, nope.
There's like a door you could go right through there, buddy. Just like a, another foot to your left there, you know. Last night, a caveman named Gork came and stole our great crown. Please bring it back to us. Oh, now he's talking faster. <laughs> like, first go to Tiki Village. Like, thank you. Get in, there's a no door, there's no locks. out hearts that would be more interesting of a game I would I would really enjoy it if that was the case although they did make a Nintendo game of Temple of Doom it wasn't that great It's like, come on, you can do it. Yeah, this is like about five frames for this game or so, at least. addiction like ride the dragon ride the snake prepare for a wild ride well, if you I have to it was wild Now this is going to be really interesting to see how this emulates, if they have the correct timing for it or not. And it looks like they might, because we're seeing slowdown already. 
might actually be a thing, but hang tight. I'll let this play out here. I'll be back in just a minute. So this game was in the Super Nintendo Classic, and makes me kind of wonder, like, are they going to also have the, you know, Star Fox 2 ROM come onto this as well? I mean, they made that whole big selling point of, like, the Super Nintendo Classic, like, it has Star Fox 2, never before released. And trust us, guys, it's completely different from the ROM that's leaked on the internet years ago, and it's complete nonsense, it's exactly the same. I mean, they only made like 20 of them. <laughs> Venom in a symbiote. Good luck. Watch out for Carnage! He's the far cooler character. Let Slippy die. He has a pain in the butt. He does not deserve to live or be on my team. Yeah, 
Maybe it was this place over here? It's like, remember there's something between one of the buildings over here. And I guess remember, there it is. Strip a bomb. Yeah, scratch the eye real quick. So I was very playing video games like, oh, we're gonna have this random ice cream itch. It's like, oh, that's great. I think I remember this game though, it had like a lot of secrets to it. Like there was like the, uh, the secret dimension. You like fight a slot machine boss. Ship chicken, Slippy. Ah, crap, you're still alive. I mean, you made it. We're into the hemorrhoid field. Build a base in this area, not this area. Destroy the rock crusher. Good luck. It's like, yeah, we're not gonna get the inside cockpit view. At least it's not like Star Fox, like, yeah, Star Fox, now with, like, Star Fox Zero Controls, you have to use your, like, Switch gamepad in order to, like, see where you're aiming. Yes, I know, that's why I'm shooting. I know what I'm doing. Nope. 
On your own. You still alive? I'm trying to think, like, why does this music remind me like so much of Zelda? And it's because it's the same soundboard that they use, like, same sound samples. Drop! Okay, well, I get the idea. It's Star Fox. I'm glad that it's running. It seems like they actually got the emulation right for the frame rate, so... This is the other big test, because whenever I play this on emulator, it runs way too well.
kind of ironic, like, you run inside, like, first-person view like this, and you actually... the frame rate improves. It's kind of weird. Cycle, and that's just like pure mayhem because you go so fast. You tend to like hit almost every single wall in, in record time. seem primitive now, and it is, but this was like really, really ahead of its time for Super Nintendo. There we go, okay. So to show you just exactly what I'm talking about here. Let's load up. Red Arch, here we go. Hey, it's T. Wallace. Which is a better racer, PC, like RC, Pro-Am, or Micro Machines? Ooh. Well, I won't be able to talk as fast as the guy from the Micro Machines, but I'd have to say that RC Pro-Am was the better machine over the Micro Machines, because basically it's the first game that came out, and it seemed to be better control over Micro Machines. Alright, speed tracks. I can already tell it's like it's running a lot better. So that's the problem with the emulation. It's like it just doesn't. It goes like, okay, we're just gonna improve this. This is the idea. Yes, that guy is still alive. All right, back to the switch. EDF. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, he, he's still alive. Still kicking. Still talking fast, but for what, I don't know. I think he may have retired from acting. Thank you. 
Slot piece for sound effect, I like it. How did I get all these games on my Switch? Well, one, you have to have Switch Online. It's like $20 a year, or if you're a Twitch Prime member, like I am, it goes Amazon Prime, you get Twitch Prime, uh, you get a year of this for free. You just have to go into the eShop and download it. It takes like about a minute. And there you go. So the emulator so far is better than the Nintendo one. The Nintendo one had up to like eight frames of input lag on certain games. It was horrendous. This seems to be around four to five at most. So this is like a lot more playable than the Nintendo was, which is great. But the downside is, though, and they, they kept this real quiet because they announced it, like, during the, the Direct a couple days ago. They're like, hey, we're finally bringing out Super Nintendo games, which is what everybody wanted. And then they didn't say this during the Direct, but they're like, oh, by the way, um, we're no longer releasing, like, two games every month for the service. It's now going to be one where we feel like releasing them. So, who knows? It could be one game a month, it could be one game for every five months, you might not get any new games from this at all. It's Nintendo, they suck. Now, you can hack your Switch. It's going to void your warranty, you probably won't be able to get online with it, but you can actually play, like, every single game, like, you can do through RetroArch. You can actually install RetroArch on your Switch now, so... So you can actually turn your Switch into a complete total emulation machine if you wanted to. Well, I didn't expect there to be Bayonetta 3 uh, during there because they just literally launched uh, Astral Chain. Which is their big project, and they kept saying like we we look forward to like to, to getting back to Bayonetta as quickly as possible. So that means that they had all the resources going with Astral Chain. So now, after like 21 months of showing us a teaser trailer and then nothing, now they're most likely just starting to develop the game. So I don't expect to see Bayonetta until Christmas 2020, or most realistically, probably summer 2021 at this rate. And trust me, as a Bayonetta fan, that makes me sad. This game is going to stomp me into the ground. So, input, input lag, it's reasonable, it's doable, it's not the worst by far. But I am impressed that they are actually emulating this pretty kind of true. Because I mean, it's like, the game so far that I know of is supposed to have slowdown, have slowdown at the correct points. Well, we have pilot wings for a Super Nintendo, but we don't have a, a real a new pilot wings. The last one that came out was for the 3DS. Oh, that reminds me. I should look at seeing how I can get a hold of that because, you know, there is a 3DS emulator. Which I've actually thought about playing. Oops, come on. I just see, like, the uh, Twitch servers start to take a nosedive real quick. There is a way to, yeah, I was thinking about being, like, possibly doing, like, a 3DS stream one of these days. It'd be kind of fun to do. Maybe. Play some Bravely Default, which has amazing music. It's like a traditional JRPG. It's very grindy, but the music in that game is just outstanding. It's kind of ironic, like, the only- because I bought Samus Re Metroid Samus Returns for the 3DS, but my hands cramp up from my arthritis trying to play on my 3DS. So, it's like, it's perfectly emulated, like, 100% exactly, like, no problems on PC. And I can, like, re- and I can change the controls, because on a 3DS version, you can't change the controls to whatever buttons you want, so emulator, I can do that too, I have a comfortable controller. It's like, hey, I can actually play this game finally. Yeah, I've heard that Bravely Second wasn't as good as the first, and and part of the complaints I've heard about are about the music, but I mean, they changed, it wasn't like, Revo wasn't doing the music anymore, so that's why the music is not as good as the first. 
I actually had the concert for the first. They did a full live action concert. Oh man, this game. I'm so terrible at it. No! Okay. Okay, so right around here is normally where we normally get slow down. And we do. A little. Yep, there we are. So, yeah, this emulator is actually kind of accurate. Yeah, the dagger I know is not a good weapon. Yeah, the game itself is it's very standard JRPG affair. It's like, okay, just go, just brave everything so you have more hits to do damage, and if you're leveling up and keeping everything the way you should be, fights are kind of a joke. Bosses might give you a little trouble here and there, a little challenge. But other than that, it's like, it's, it's not bad, but the music is just... Um, it's like, that was... Like, that was a game where I have, like, a Y audio cable. Which basically allows you to, like, hook up, like, a 3.5mm jack into, like, a stereo system. And in my old apartment, I would, like, literally sit there playing my 3DS, like, playing Bra Bravely Default. A little handheld, but then, like, just cranking the music through my surround speaker. <laughs> it's like... Because, like, that music was worth it. It's like... It's one of the crazy things that the 3DS has amazing stereo sound. I mean, the music for it is really great. Like, even for, like, um, Zelda. Was it uh, Link Between Worlds? I have that, too. And that's just, like... You hear it through the 3DS speakers, you're like, eh, it's all right, but you plug in a pair of headphones, like, really good headphones, and it just sounds amazing. It's like, oh my gosh. Yeah, so if you have the ability to hook up, like, a 3DS through a Y audio cable into a speaker system where you have really good headphones, definitely do it, because that's really how you want to play your 3DS. Sure, I'll grab the torch. I'll have a bad time with it. If I live long enough. Now, long ago, like 25 years ago, 26 years ago, I was able to get to the second level. And that's a rare thing. Like I said, I am terrible at this game. As if, as if you couldn't tell already. You see people like Aquas who just like go through and just run this game multiple times and just speed run it. it just makes it look ridiculous. Watching people like Aquas like play this game makes it look fun and amazing. Like, wow, that looks like a great game. I try it myself. I'm like, oh god, I'm terrible. All right, Super Metroid. We all know that game. Poyo Poyo I actually started off with. And uh, let's see, Mario Kart. Kind of just going through the list, trying every game, except for like the RPG Breath of Fire. This game, oh man, oh man, oh man. So if I had to pick between this and Mario Kart 64 for my favorite, I would still pick Mario Kart 64, but this is like, it's like a hair's breadth between the two of them. Because I mean, this game was just so amazing.
This was kind of like the original, like, party game. You know, the battle mode, you just run around, shoot each other, so a lot of fun to be had. the handling. A lot of crazy drifting. Don't remember Yoshi being this drifty. So I'm sure there's probably a task of this which is like far, like way more entertaining than it could ever be. Wow, that was like full stop. <laughs> This game does take a little bit of getting used to, but I mean, once you get used to it, it's just you're gonna be navigating tracks no problem. Another game I also bought today, I actually bought a game for my Switch, I bought a couple. River City Girls, have not tried it out yet, heard really good things. My friend Pedro, play it on PC if you have to, Switch is terrible. And then Katana Zero, another stinker of a game. So many crappy games. Three years ago, I think it was about two or three years ago, probably closer to three. I did a stream of called what I called Buddhist Mario, which is a custom game mode where basically you go through, you play the game, you can't kill enemies because you know, except for the bosses, you have to kill them or you can't progress the game. Other than that, you can't kill anything. You also cannot collect coins of any kind. And you have to walk through the final gated level in order to show humility. If you screw up any of that, you have to take a death, do it over. It took me like 45 minutes to get past the first level, like the first world. Yeah, Bowser was really tricky in Mario Kart. He had so much weight behind him. I used to play as, as Yoshi, but like I said, I don't remember Yoshi being so drift heavy. I mean, he was just like sliding everywhere. Okay, that... that's not right. Okay. 
This sound effect is not right. Yeah, that... Okay, so... Minor sound emulation problem. It's not game-breaking, but that those tones are not correct. bad in that game at all. Yes, they've improved the tones. It's a feature. It's not not due to our emulation, no. So other than that, the emulation for this has not been bad. I just noticed I was like, whoa, that, that was not right. feels like about maybe four frames which is not bad I mean it's, it's still playable there are like purists out there will be like oh I can't do anything here it's like it's not that bad it's like you can still play the game you need to make a mental adjustment and you get used to it pretty quickly when we start getting past like five frames that's when it's just like it becomes just about unplayable Back when the Super Nintendo came out, I was living in California, and my brother was friends with this kid on our street, like our little neighborhood block, and this kid was like 100% psychotic, and like, I'm a functional psychopath, but I mean, this kid was like, okay, it's like, I'm going to kill a kitten with a screwdriver psychotic, you know, just for fun because he's bored, that type of crazy. His parents had a Super Nintendo, and they're like, hey, do you want to come over and play with our son? And it's like, well, Super Nintendo, I might as well go. He has more of my brother's friend, whatever. So, uh, yeah. And he, like, he had just gotten the Super Nintendo, like, maybe an hour before. And we're just watching him play, and he was just, like, finding all these crazy secrets. It's like, how would you know that? It's like, I don't know, I just know it's there. I'm like, Jeez, it was like he knew instantly how to get out of the ghost house. He had never been there before. It was like all sorts of stuff. It was like, jeez, man. It's like you're crazy and scary as hell, but yeah. So doing Super Buddhist Mario, you can't do this level. Maybe you might be able to. So I think you can hit it, but. Nope, because you still still trigger it. Yeah, so that would be a fail. <laughs> so I couldn't remember, it's been a while, but I actually have it archived on my YouTube channel. Yeah, Pierce complain about everything to you all, it's true, but it's just like... Like, I don't do emulation anymore, or I don't... You know, I have to play everything in RGB. It's like, I can't do any component cables. It's like, pull the stick out of your butt, learn to have fun. It doesn't have to be perfect. No one cares. It's like, the question is like, are you having fun? Do you want to play this? Because if you can't have fun playing a game that everybody else plays, then, you know, something is wrong on a certain level. Now, I'm not saying, like, you have to like the game. Like, for example, people like Persona 5, and I think that game is total garbage. But I understand for what it is. It's a playable game. People enjoy it and have fun, but it's playable. 
That's like, that's number one. It's like, is the game playable or not? If it is, then that's fine. That was a one-up or something down here. Nope. Shroom! like I have I have two CRT televisions and yes it's like if you're playing on an actual Super Nintendo it will look a lot better on that CRT it there's just no way around it but I'm not like but then there's people like I can't play this unless it's like a CRT television you know I have to do it this way and everything and those people are just like just get over it Persona was okay three and four I enjoyed I thought those were okay but five was just so pretentious so far up its butt. With its, like, storytelling, it's like, oh! It's like, it lets you, like, play one battle at the beginning, you literally kill everything in one hit, there's one guy, you do one thing, and you're, you won. And then you don't have any more battles, fights, or anything for four hours. And during that entire time, you're told repeatedly by, by everyone in the game, you are the worst person in existence, you suck, you should just go kill yourself, why are you alive? Because you got framed for, like, saving a woman, stopping a woman from being raped, but somehow you got framed as being the attacker, and instead of just saying, hey, I stopped this from happening, I'm not the bad guy, I saved her, you can talk to her, and she was like, I'll help you, you know, I'll vouch for you, and he doesn't speak up for himself. It's just four hours of you just being told you, you, you suck, and you're a piece of shit. It's like, and why is this fun? And then, like, and I ask people who legitimately like Persona 5, I'm like, why do you like it? And it's always two things I hear back from them. It's either, it's the style, like the graphical style, art style, or the music. Never the gameplay. Never the story. Never the adventuring. It's always, I like the music and the style. Well, that's not a game. I like Chrono Trigger. There's great music. There's great style to it. But the story is amazing. Going back and exploring things is fun. You know, you have to have fun doing with it there. If you don't have it, you have just amazing music, and the game's not there, you're not going to enjoy it. Yeah, Metal Gear Solid 4 is fun, in my opinion. If you... Once you get past all the, the story nonsense... It's like, it's like, you get past, like, especially like the first level. Yeah, because I think you were around that for last year, T. Wallace, when I was doing the Metal Gear Solid 1 through 5 playthroughs. Where it's just like, <laughs> it's like, first level, okay, take two steps, and now we have to watch a 20 minute cutscene. That got old pretty kind of quick, but like, the missions were actually like running through and doing stuff, that was fun. Yeah, it's pretty much, they should have just been visual novels. Really? I mean, it wouldn't hurt anything. So, I mean, it's obviously like they want to have like a narration, like a narrated story to tell. But it's just, it's just annoying to try to play and people are like, it gets better, it gets better. It's like, well, when does it get better? Well, it gets better after around 20 hours or so. It's, it's like the, it's literally the Final Fantasy 13 argument of the game's fun after you play it for 20 to 30 hours. So I hate to break it to you, if you have to play crap for 20 to 30 hours, it's not good. So how's the emulator, Bill Scass? Well, it's actually really good. Um, it's a lot better, kind of, after it's warmed up for a little bit, than the Nintendo emulator. Um, input lag, the worst I've felt so far seems to be around 5 frames. Everything seems to be about 4. There is one little minor sound problem i found with it so far. It's like, if you listen to the opening... Like, listen to this turtle shell part. This is not right. Okay, let's do that again. This time, not doing it wrong. Yeah, that's... that's not right. 
Other than that, it seems to be around four to five frames. It absolutely, like, games that have slowdown actually have slowdown at the correct points. Like, Stunt Race FX actually runs, like, ten frames a second, which is what it pretty much did on the actual cart. Uh, which is pretty neat. <laughs> First, I would have to learn how to do that. And, uh, I don't have that type of patience. Ghost's Island 2, we've all seen Super Metroid. We've all seen... Oh, that's gonna be even worse because Super Metroid. Okay, here's here's my thing. I like Super Metroid. I think it's a fun game. Is it the best game ever? Like people are like, it's the best game on the Super Nintendo ever made. No, that game has built-in input lag. Even playing on a CRT on the actual system, you still have input lag for your, all your moves and stuff. And it's kind of hard to do. Playing it on this with like this emulator with the input delay on top of it. It might be about unplayable. I remember Ronnie last night was telling me that he was trying to play Super Metroid and he's just having the hardest time. He's like, he's trying to jump and it's just not coming out. And it'd come out like really late. So this one might not be really playable on emulator, on this system at least. Now, here's the fun thing. If you have a Super Nintendo, well, if NTSC Super Nintendo... Buy the Japanese version if you want to have this game. I own the Japanese card of this. It's gone up in price, unfortunately. Like, the American version at the time was selling for around $50 to $60. So I bought the Japanese version, the Super Famicom. It cost me $9 total with shipping from Japan. It is the exact same game if you play it, if you buy it from Japan or the American version. Everything's full in English. There's actually a Japanese option. But it's in English by default. Well, this was like about three years ago I bought it. So, even the Japanese version of the game doesn't have Japanese text like this. It has that option there, but the default is English. Like, it's the exact 100% same game as you would buy the, the American version. Shot X? Good lord. Yeah, their control scheme's all screwed up. Dash R... Yeah, the only thing that's in Japanese is the voiceover text here. Like, this part will have Japanese the subtitles on the bottom. That's it. Is in captivity. The galaxy is at peace. And if you pick up an item, like when you get like the missiles, then it'll just have it subtitled on the bottom. That's it. That's the only difference. They were enjoyed playing a bunch of games, hated all the backtracking. This one I enjoyed. Um... The first Metroid was just so confusing. And it just... I mean, it's like you literally had to like make your own maps for things. And this game, they gave you a map. It wasn't as confusing, thankfully. So this is the far better of the Metroid games. Prime... Like, the Metroid Prime games, I didn't really get into. Mostly because of the GameCube controllers. Because I have arthritis really bad in my hands. And you have to, like keep clicking in like those like the thumbsticks or not thumbsticks but the analog triggers all the way in to get them to register and that just makes my hands hurt after a while so emulations another better things i can use an xbox controller or something different and i can actually play it a lot easier but even then it's like the first metroid prime game what are you doing you're running around and you're scanning everything non-stop it's like oh there's a bad guy you have to scan it there's a wall switch you have to scan it in order to get the door open here's the missiles you have to scan it it's like i just want to run and shoot stuff and it seems to be like really highly praised but it's mostly amongst the people who gamecube was their first system that people are like, oh, like, Mario Sunshine, this is a great game. It's like, it's, it was my first Mario game. I'm like, how old were you when this game came out? I was four. I'm like, I was in my mid-twenties. <laughs> it's like, dang. It's like, that's that's kind of the reason why, you know. It's, you're a little bit biased too because that's what your first thing was. Like, if you were, you know, like my brother, my younger brother, like, his first system was the Nintendo 64 because he was born in 97. And he didn't have a GameCube at first till I bought him one for his birthday. But he grew up in Nintendo 64, so he doesn't have any nostalgia for a Super Nintendo or anything else like that. 
and he bases everything kind of off the Nintendo 64 at that point. It's his point of reference. Like, I was a Nintendo kid. I didn't have a Nintendo. Still don't own an original Nintendo. But for me, gaming kind of came into with the 16-bit era. That's where I really started to enjoy things a lot more. Like, the games that were really good were... Oh, wow, this is... This is bad. Whoa, okay. Yeah, so 16-bit era is where I really started to like gaming a lot. Like, Super Nintendo... For home consoles, Sega Genesis. This is like... This is about six frames. This is about six or seven. I, I bet it probably closer to seven, maybe eight. This is really... This is not easy. <laughs> it's like... So, if you're playing this version thinking like, man, it's really kind of hard to control and run through, I feel really sluggish, it's the emulator. Well, right, the thing is like, I just, I'm kind of sensitive to lag to a certain point. So I can kind of like get a good feel like how bad things are by like button presses and then going through. This is probably seven, maybe eight. Just based purely on feel and timing reactions for like how fast I can get my finger off the button to when I start actually doing a control input. That's gonna be murder trying to get out of here. Mode 7! That's why there's no background in here. Yeah, it's like, when you're building a space station, why would you build in, like, a self-destruct like mechanism? Like, was it, like, somebody's job to, like, put in bombs? It's like, alright, we're all done putting up the, uh, you know, the ceiling here or anything else. Well, we need to make sure that you put bombs in here in case we would need to blow it up for fun. Just for arbitrary reasons. Like, that's gonna cost extra, and it goes against Union. Oh, man. Alright, I made it, but... <laughs> yeah, this is... It's, it's rough on the Switch. Not gonna lie. That is... It's pretty hard. Yeah. Yeah, just don't tell them that, like, you're part of the IRS or taxing anybody. So, so, so what do you guys have in this building? Oh, lots of computers and high technology. <laughs> Here, let me send you a package. Game selection. Uh, Super Soccer I've never played. Super Tennis I have complete in box. I love it. It's a very simple game, but it's a lot of fun. Let's do Super Soccer. Pardon me. Yes, initiate manifesto sequence. He shoots. He scores! Okay, that guy deserved to... I'm not sure what that defender was doing at that point, really. Early Super Nintendo music, too. Deutschland! Holland! England! Cameroon! No way ever picks. USA! Oh, look, we have low... Yeah, it's, Uruguay is somehow lower than us? What? Belgium, too. I mean, have you seen the United States men's team? We just ain't that good. Yugoslavia, we no longer exist! Select your foosball table. It's just... 
four three three is not too bad. the back of the head? What a soccer or football is this? <sighs> and my goalkeeper is asleep. drunk. This is like, this playing this game is like trying to herd cats. It's like, I have, gosh, it was, I had FIFA 95, I think it was. And that game was far better than this. <laughs> it's like, this game is just like, insanity. All right, Super Tennis. We get to play as the ball here for a second. Oh! So this game is a lot of fun. It's very simple, very straightforward. It's a blast to play two-player. But still, though, Virtua Tennis for the Dreamcast has my heart as the best tennis game ever of all time. Hero! First Donna. Long, hard. I like playing against hard. Concrete surfaces. Play. Play. Do it. Do it. It's gonna wave at you. Okay, what are my buttons? Can't remember. So I think Y does a lob. Must remember the timing. Anything to show off that beautiful mode seven. Play. Uh. Uh. Okay, so X is forearm. Y, I'm pretty sure is going to be a lob. We'll try that in a second. So they're probably going to smash on me. Yeah, that's a that's a lob. Yeah. Oh. It was in. I gotta be lying like that. Yay, pity points. Never understood the scoring for for tennis, and then I realized it's a French game. It doesn't have to make sense. It's like 15, 30. Oh, so is the next score 45? No, 40. Okay. But the cool thing, though, is you could change the color of the ball, so that was pretty awesome. 
As a colorblind person, I always thought that was great. More mode seven. Play. Yeah, I'm not getting that one. All right. We're almost done through the whole game selection here. I'm doing everything. We'll do Yoshi's Island. Then we'll do the best Mario ever. One of the best Mario's, or not Mario's, Zelda games. Unskippable cutscene. Back in the day, I it took me like two months. But I 100%ed this game, and this game is no joke. It gets hard. It's a it's a difficult game, but it's a lot of fun. And I hold every single Yoshi game that's come out since then to this game, and they have failed miserably, in my opinion. Like they're just usually way too easy. You think after that incessant crying too, they would as well. Just like, okay, we're gonna shut them up. And just. Eat them. So this is another game that I have, both uh, American and Japanese. And Japanese version, it's Yossi. Y-O-S-S-I. Uh, Yosh. Yes, you have to consume. Don't ask questions, just consume. Making eggs! <laughs> My boy or a girl? Apparently, I guess Yoshi's a girl? Here we go. Ready? Oh, yeah. That never gets old or annoying. Yeah, I am, like, really impressed with anybody who can speedrun this game. Especially, like, 100%. It's like, there are so many things in this game you have to remember, and it's like a two and a half hour game to run. I'm trying to get used to input delay on this. It's slightly off. Not completely unplayable, but it's a little bit rough.
Oh yeah, it looks really great, and this is like a Super FX 2 chip game as well. So, even more rare. Rarish. In the early days of GDQ, this used to be a staple. I mean, this game pretty much showed up also every year, so... Game selection... Alright, final one! Zelda Link to the Past. My personal favorite Zelda game. Like this and Wind Waker. See here. Not. Oh, it's not gonna let me do it. Not in Zell. Yeah, so why is this game The Legend of Zelda when you play as Link every single time in order to save Zelda? What it's. It's like, what's her legend? Well, she keeps getting kidnapped by the bad guy, and uh, this guy named Link comes to save her. Oh, okay, was it just like a split Oh, no, 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 it took like days and amazing journey. Years ago, when I first started streaming, I was actually streaming Wind Waker, and <laughs> named my character not Zelda. Not Zell. Yeah, I don't think this sound is quite right. I don't remember there being this kind of like staticky pseudo thunder sound. Take my sword and shield, listen, you can focus the power of the blade. Hold the B button. Release it using the secret technique handed down by our people. Save the princess. Zelda is your... And he's dead. He's just... just completely, totally dead. I'm sure people have seen this before, <sighs> but this I absolutely like. We turn this down. There we go. 720p. And then... Dust up! Yeah. Yep, nice and loud. Good groan. Yeah. Link, I didn't want you involved in this. I told you not to leave the house. Take my sword and shield and listen. You can focus power in the blade. Hold the B button. Then release it using the secret technique handed down by our people. Link, you can do it. <laughs> Save the princess. <laughs> Zelda is your... She is your... Oh. Zelda's my what? Zelda's my what? What did I say? Answer me! What? Wake up! Oh my god! Ah! Zelda's my what? What did I say? I'm a fairy! Wake up! Read this shit! Come on! Need it. No, I won't stop! What is Zelda? What is Zelda? I wanna put my wiener in that! I gotta know! She relates to me! Link, come save me! Zelda! I'll go! I'll go! I'll go! What is Zelda? 
<laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, so are they related? I don't think it ever gets addressed in the game either. It's like, Zelda is your, then just, just nothing. Now I can stab people. <laughs> For making me clean my room. Hi, person just defending the castle and the king. It's gonna straight up murder you. Hope you don't mind. Also, because like Dwayne and Brando, it's like I was here, like gonna hit punch you all in the face. Such great music. Doing it wrong, I'm supposed to like throw everybody off the cliff. Another OSHA violation underneath the castle. You got the boomerang! Aha! Now you die. Come on, there you go. Hi. Thank you, not Zell. Thank you, not Zelda. I'm Zelda. 
Yes, yes, father, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Escort mission, go! And Twitch decides to drop frames, which is fine anyway. But yeah, that's pretty much all the games with except for Breath of Fire, which is an RPG, which is, it's all right. It's, this emulator so far is a great deal better, much better, wrong one, than the Nintendo emulator that came out, because that was just, it's one of those things you got really a feel to really kind of describe it there, but I mean, like I said, for example, you can't turn off the directions on the screen for how to control the game, like all the controls are permanently up there. Wow, special thing to buy that. No, there's something new to play. Well, that's great. Ooh, I wonder if that's the SFC. I wonder if that's the uh, Famicom version. Kirby's Adventure in special version? What? Metroid. So I wonder what the special version is about it. It's like, we're just gonna have it as an excuse to keep releasing the same games for the same service that nobody wants. Oh, they, oh, how nice they patched it. They finally made it so you can take out the show controls in the game because before this was not here. So that's an improvement. And the best. Double Dragon game. Is that we? Nah, still switch. This game kicks our everything. Now he's like, you can rewind your game. Yeah, this is like... This is about eight frames right now, delay. It is brutal. And it also eats inputs too. There's certain times I'm, I'm hitting the button and it won't come out. Right there, that was another missed input. Okay, you can get off the screen now, thank you. Interesting, normally they just keep climbing up the ladder and they decide they're gonna stay there. Flicker in effect, kind of. Not quite. Because it didn't flicker like that. It was actually more rapid. It wasn't like just blocks missing. So I wonder if this glitch is still works. Yep. See ya! <laughs> He's freaking out like it doesn't know what to do right now.
Normally it would just end the level right now, it would skip the level. And it's not quite doing that. I think as soon as you beat these these bad guys here, then it like thinking then it pulls you instantly into the door, we'll see. Stop following me. Okay, so the glitch will still do it, but it's not moving you on to the next level. So that's... so it's like a partial... it'll work partially at best, so... Weird. I, it's it's like, okay, well, we're going to have that continue on into our Nintendo version we're emulating, but not have it work correctly. So go figure that. But for now. We've reached the end of the stream. Been streaming for about two and a half hours or so. Oh, hands are swollen up because I was playing Control before I started streaming. I'm almost done with that game, which is a lot of fun. So thanks for hanging out, everybody. I do appreciate it. Of course, Hold Your Fire, Mollusk, uh, Ronnie, T. Wallace. Uh, I think that's about it here. And I also had, um, gosh, what was it? The Couch Lord also dropped by and said hello, too. So it's all cool. So I'm going to take tomorrow off from streaming. Actually, no, I'll stream again tomorrow because I took Friday off. So I'll be back on the 8th, be streaming again, maybe doing, probably doing the new River City Ransom, the one I just downloaded right now, I'll be playing that. Or I'll be torturing myself with more Super Empire. I do plan on going through and actually finishing that game, but probably do uh, the new River City Ransom instead. I do stream at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you don't know when that is, just go ahead and type that into Google, and it will tell you for wherever you are in the world. You can also check me out on Twitter at Warsel555. I always post up usually around two or three hours in advance if I'm going to be streaming, or if I need to cancel, or what I'll be playing, and so forth. So that's the plan. Uh, next time, the new River City game, we'll be playing that, and uh, it'll be interesting. Give it a go. I haven't played it at all. I just downloaded it today, bought it, haven't fired it up to even test it, so it'll be a first for me. So till then, see you later.